Tom was around the set quite a bit. Uh, he was hanging around, and I asked him specifically about, you know, what, was he aware of the effect that Fred was having on him? You know, Tom was going through, I guess, you know, anything that a man goes through, you know, family and health and work and career. He wasn't the happiest guy on the planet. But in the course of doing his job, he came smack dab uh, face up against Fred Rogers, who were saying things like, you're really special, you know, you have a, you have a lot of gifts and you work hard at what you do. And, uh, you know, you don't have to do anything to make me like you. I, 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 I'm liking you fine. And I'm sure the jaded f member of the fourth estate in, in, in Tom's mind would say, what's this guy hiding? How why is he snowing me on this thing? And uh, he was just being, being Fred Rogers. She came out very specifically uh, back to me with a, uh, with a perspective of the power of the force of Mr. Rogers as opposed to the plot that goes on. Um, I said, oh, 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 okay, whoa, 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 I, I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> that I understand. And I hadn't seen the documentary yet, hadn't done anything like that. I just I just knew that she was coming at this was this this is the red dot of what this movie is, and that is the chosen power of empathy. I have played real guys before, people who actually existed. And sometimes I've had, I've interviewed, I've spent a lot of time with the actual guys I've I played. Uh, Jim Lovell, uh, uh, Sully Sullenberger, uh, Charlie Wilson. And all the time you say, look, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to say things you didn't do and uh, say things you didn't say and do things you didn't do. But beyond that, I want to be as accurate as possible. The, the added burden of if I can be so bold as Mr. Rogers, because I, it was not just the expectations of the man himself, but the expectations of everybody else about Mr. Rogers. I think he's one of those people that for Fred actually turned into a broader human experience. And I've seen the letters that they wrote back and forth to each other long for long after that. I saw a lot of correspondence that he would keep up. And he and Tom, Tom uh, uh, Junot, um, they, they, they kept in touch about everything that was possibly, you know, under the sun, which is, again, once you, it, what's the, uh, L Lloyd, in our movie, um, expanded Fred's world and, he was grateful for just how special the gift that is. Fred was literally one of the people who loved Lloyd into existence. In our movie, that's what happens. And Lloyd is so much, he's a better everything. He's a better son. He's a better father. He's a better husband. He's a better journalist. He's a better friend. All because a guy who had no reason to do so said, you know, you're, you're very special. You know, and I, I, I think you're great just exactly as you are. This piece will be for an issue about heroes. Do you consider yourself a hero? Tom Juno wrote one of the most beautiful articles you could read for Esquire magazine about Mr. Rogers. At the time, I was really going to the dark side on stories, and somebody at the magazine thought it would be really kind of funny having me doing a story on Fred Rogers. 400 words, play nice. I'm profiling Mr. Rogers. Oh, God, Lloyd, please, don't ruin my childhood. Tom was going through anything that a man goes through, you know, family and health and career, but he came face up against Fred Rogers, who had a mission to engender understanding and kindness. You said it was a play at the plate. Is that what happened to you? I'm here to interview you, Mr. Rogers. Well, that is what we're doing, isn't it? His ability for empathy was enormous. What he could do immediately to any kind of problem, any human condition, was relate to it. You love people like me. What are people like you? Broken people. 
I don't think you were broken. I thought that I was the hunter, he was the game. The amazing thing about it, of course, was <laughs> Fred wasn't having any of that. He had that amazing gift of looking at a person and seeing what that person needed. And that person in this particular case was me. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. It ended up changing his life. It wasn't that Fred taught him to not go after things with journalistic integrity. It was that he taught him to see the world through a slightly kinder lens. And you see it in his writing from then on. Thank you for doing that with me. I feel so much better. He had something really sophisticated to say, and he had something really important to say, and he had something really moving to say. And that, to me, I thought was just absolutely genius about the screenplay. So then you start to do the deep dive into Fred, and I started coming to Pittsburgh and meeting with the people who worked with Fred and visiting the archives, and you learn about this incredible philosophy of Fred's that every living being is has value every living being um, has purpose and that if you treat the world if you listen with an attitude of kindness to other people if you listen to yourself with kindness that the world can be a better place you can be a happier person um, and that love and kindness can prevail in the world and that to me is amazing and and when you take that what seems like a very simple idea and a very basic idea, and you start to look at the tentacles of how that idea plays out in the world, it is truly radical and transformational. When Tom came to write this story about him, as happened with so many people, Tom was deeply touched by him, and it became this profound experience in his life that wasn't just an assignment. And what he ended up writing was a piece that was as much about, maybe more about himself than it was about Fred. But in so doing, he really did write about Fred because that was Fred's life work, was to, to, to make you figure out who you are. Tom, over the course of his career, has built up an empathy with the audience, has built up a trust with the audience, has built up an adoration from the audience that is um, built upon the same kind of sincerity and authenticity that Fred had. Fred was disarmingly sincere, as you watch footage of him. Um, and Tom has a similar thing. So, whereas most actors have to erase themselves and lose themselves into the role or would have to into the role of Fred. Tom can bring a lot of himself to this one and that's why that was iconic, perfect casting. Everybody, I think, assumed that, oh, these sets are just all set up in one stage and you just flip from one side to the other. That was not the case. Uh, as we found out, the uh, neighborhood of make-believe is something that goes up first, it gets struck, and then uh, Fred's hell set comes in. So our first task was to recreate these things. Um, there, uh, the Senator John Hines History Center in Pittsburgh uh, has some of the pieces. Uh, for the house that they only actually had one wall, that's the wall where uh, Fred walks in, Mr. Rogers walks in and says hello. So from that, that was the only thing we had that was scaled. So from that and from watching television programs, watching many episodes of the show and also uh, some of the photos that were available, we had to recreate that whole set. It's actually been one of the great honors of my life. I mean, I think, you know, the world seems so chaotic right now and everyone 
is in disagreement about so much stuff and it seems like civility has gone out out the window and to just be reminded of what Mr. Rogers was all about, who Fred Rogers was, um, that's been especially powerful for me. Um, and so getting up every day to work on this movie has not been like the typical experience. Like it feels, it's been like a mission um, to just do the best that I can do. And I know that this entire crew feels the same way. It's really, really special. I thought it was very beautiful, and, and I thought it demonstrated also just through a, a one story, you know, a simple relationship, one story um, with Fred Rogers and the journalist, um, how he profoundly affected and changed his life. And then the end, in a way you realize, and all the pictures he took, that he would always take a photograph of people he was um, interacting with or dealing with and realizing that, well, then you can multiply this one story by how many more stories. He seems like the perfect man to play Fred Rogers because there's a decency to him and a genuineness. She's a remarkable woman. So for me to have the opportunity to try to um, portray her and you know, not doing an imitation at all because she's unique and just the fire in her, the, the joy of life that comes out of her is um, pretty rare. And, um, and it's quite a thrill for me to be able to approach that. We need this now, you know, kindness. Someone who talks about kindness, about saying, I, I like you just the way you are. You know, we are together. We, we can do this together. We, and, and it's not schmaltzy. You know, it's not pompous piety or anything like that. It's, it's purely human. And that's what affected me. And I thought, I'm so lucky to be in this world now, you know, to have this. I love the fact that 50 years later, we're still celebrating what Fred stood for in terms of the children that he respected. And he was one of the first people professionally to use that term with children, respecting children's feelings, respecting children, listening to children. I saw photos from the previous art director of the neighborhood of the set that they're building for this movie of the Mr. Rogers home and his, the sets that they used. And I think they are fabulous looking just in photos. And the art director said to me, it brought her to tears. It was such a good job. She said, usually in movies, they cut corners. And in this one, they didn't at all. It looks exactly like Fred's set. I think the audience will see another dimension of Fred, the depth of how he worked with people and supported people that he knew. And these were not stories that were widely publicized. These were just people that Fred helped along the way. There were so many. And I think it's going to be interesting to see one in-depth example of that support that he provided. Is this Andrea? Yes. This is Fred Rogers. Oh, hi. Who is it? Uh, Lois, right here. Oh, no, I, Andrea, while I have you, I just want to thank you so much for sharing 
Lloyd with us. Can't be easy him traveling with Gavin at home. Oh, well, thank you for saying that. I'm gonna give Lloyd to you now. Mr. Rogers knows my name. He was just this beloved figure. For so many of us who grew up in the 70s or the 80s or 90s, um, he just represented good in the world in so many ways. And the thing that he does for children that I think I now as a parent relate to so much is he actually listens to children and tries to um, give voice to their feelings and lets their experience be valid. Tom and I talked a lot in the months leading up to shooting about Fred's voice and about his mannerisms. And I think the trickiest thing for Tom was sort of to just slow himself down. Um, we never wanted it to be like he was doing an SNL impersonation. We never wanted it to feel like a skit. So we knew it was always going to have Tom Hanks in there. Um, but Tom Hanks is a really charming guy. He walks into a room, you know he's there, he's chatting with everyone, he's greeting everyone, he's got like a booming loud voice, he's really present, but he never lets an awkward moment happen. He doesn't, um, he'll always fill it and tell a joke and make everyone feel comfortable. Which Fred wasn't like that. Fred was quiet. Fred was very comfortable with silence, or whether he was comfortable or not, he allowed for a lot of silence. He didn't really mind if he was making you uncomfortable. Um, and he kind of just stared at you and he didn't also move a lot. And like, I can just feel myself as I'm sitting here gesticulating all the time. Tom's the same way. He gesticulates, he moves his body, he shifts around. Fred kind of found his position and kind of kept it. And if you watch him in interviews, he's really still. So that was sort of the biggest challenge, honestly, was just tapping into like this different energy. There was this sort of weird duality happening on set all the time where the real people were meeting our version of those people, or even I think Joanne Rogers hanging out with Tom Hanks when he was dressed as her husband, I think. There was, for them, it was probably so surreal. For them, it probably felt like a weird dream where they were stepping back in time and going up to a funhouse mirror and looking at themselves. Um, but for us, it was all about wanting to make sure they felt like we were doing them right and doing them proud. And over and over again, people said to me that they were so touched by how much we cared and how respectful they felt like we were being and that we really got it right. My hope with this film was always that this isn't about telling the story of Mr. Rogers or telling a biopic or letting you know some interesting sordid detail about his life. I hope that people take a moment to reflect on themselves and their own emotional self and their own em emotional well-being and get to reflect on their humanity through watching the movie, which is a bigger challenge to the audience than I think people maybe will be expecting. Who better to play Mr. Rogers uh, than Tom Hanks? I thought that the minute I heard of it, about it. But um, also just for me walking in, I do not hang out with Tom Hanks on you know my everyday life. And I was a little bit nervous um, coming into the hair and makeup trailer the first day a couple weeks ago. And he just said, oh, we've been waiting for you. So that to me is, Again, kindness. There's a lot of kindness on this, um, on this set and in this film. Mari Heller is such a solid director because she lets you feel like you're making your own choices, but she truly knows exactly what she wants. So 
I at least feel very safe with her. Um, she is very much in control, but she has a very gentle hand. Today, when I walked on to the set, I started to cry. <laughs> it really was, um, inc it was moving to see the trolley and the tree and the clock. I really did have a moment. Um, it's something, it really is. They're so kind and I think they're so appreciative because Mari and everybody, Arjun, the costume designer, has taken such care, and the set design is so beautiful. Like, there's nothing casual about this um, production. Everything is taken really seriously and um, with great respect for who and what we are reenacting or portraying. I think Tom Hanks was always our first choice. He is the most ideal for the role. He is America's neighbor. He's so beloved. And, you know, in in casting Fred, you can't cast anyone who has any skeletons in their closet. You can't cast an actor that is cynical in any way, shape, or form. And that's a very hard thing to find. I think Tom Hanks embodies all of the wonderful qualities that Fred embodied, and it really did begin and end there. And the truth is, if we didn't get Tom, I'm not quite sure where we would have gone from there, so I'm very happy that we did. I was really struck with the amount of time and care and the kinds of questions that Tom asked Joanne about Fred. Um, really moved me and all of us and gave us obviously incredible confidence in the fact that he really was the right person for this role. I think she's amazing. She knows exactly what she wants. She's incredibly sure of herself. She knows this script inside and out every element of it. But what I'm really struck with is how amazingly she works with the actors. Um, it, it's almost like watching theater. It's really incredible to see her process, working with each individual actor, working through the characters, through their arc, through their journey, from small moments to big moments, and just guide them through that process. And But also, she trusts her actors so much and gives them the confidence to find find the role and find the character. And <clears throat> action. Do you know what this is? It's Lord. Lo Lord. Hold, please. We can't fire him, can we? Hello, Lord. Oh, it's nice to meet you. What? Are you all right? Play at the plate. Oh, mercy, that looks like it hurts. Uh, let's chat afterwards. We Maybe need to keep we moving. could have Evan take a, take a look at him. No, I'm I'm good. No, I'm I good. Think, sorry, Fred. Yeah. It's me too. All right, all right. <laughs> it's wonderful to meet you. So glad you're here, Lloyd. I'm looking forward to, to talking with you. I truly am. After this. Everyone, th th this is Lloyd Vogel. He is a wonderful writer. He's got so many of the same beautiful qualities and, and empathy and kindness and, and, and a gentleness about him and that... Um, it's easy to understand why he was approached.
She has a great sensitivity for this kind of subject, I think. Um, and uh, wonderful thing is um, she's allowed me to really develop this character. Fred Rogers has exemplified anything but rudeness. Um, and uh, we need, you know, we need the empathy, we need the kindness, we need the forgiveness. Um, and um, I think folks will feel really good walking out of the theater. I think people are looking for what's real. They're looking for authenticity. They're looking for people who really care about them or care about others. They're looking for that genuine spirit of, I'm your friend, you are my friend. And they wanna see that genuineness last over a period of time, not just while the lights are on or while the cameras are on. And I think what they're seeing in Fred is that it was, it was consistent that who, you know, we would always say, what you see is what you get. What you saw on television is what you saw when the camera was off. There was no difference between that person. He is one of the warmest people you'd ever want to meet. It's hard to believe that it's Tom Hanks when you're standing there talking with him. I mean, it's really hard to believe that this is Tom Hanks. This is somebody you've seen in how many movies and how many roles and how many TV programs, and how many interviews. He really, like Fred, focuses on the person he's talking with. That's what's important to him. So I think there are a lot of qualities that Fred had as a person that Tom Hanks has as a person. I hope it shows more than Fred, is it shows how important relationships are. How much, how, how important people are to us. You know, one of the things that, that I always picked up from, from Fred is Fred would do these visits to a factory and everybody would say, oh, we love your factory visits. Fred would always respond, I'm glad you like when we show how people make things. Because to Fred, it was always about people. And if we don't have real genuine friends and people in our lives, what else do we have? And I think that, that what, that's what this shows, that this relationship between these two men helped both of them. And they both grew as a result of it. I don't think there was a choice in Tom being Fred. He was kind of born to play Fred. Is that he brings so many qualities that I think as a mass audience, people feel about Tom Hanks. It has the same feeling that Fred Rogers elicits in people. There's an incredible, when you say, oh, I'm doing a film with Tom Hanks, people will always smile, you know, and in a very warm way. And when you talk to the people, good people of Pittsburgh, not even Pittsburgh, of the United States of America, and you say Fred Rogers, it's the same smile. Um, so the marriage of the two, of Tom playing Fred, couldn't have been written in a book because it's perfect. I think Lloyd has prided himself on the fact that he is a very hard-edged investigative journalist whose pursuit of truth um, tr trumps, for lack of a better term, um, everything. So I think he feels very justified in the ways and the means by which he goes after that truth and whether or not that's relatively vitriolic or angry or violent and not physically. Um, he thinks it's absolutely justified if it's in the pursuit of truth. Um, so I think after a maybe a few experiences of this, his editors very wisely said, look, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna segue you to something a little nicer. Uh, you are to write a piece about um, Mr. Rogers, to, it, to which Lloyd balks at the hilarity. Um, 
and which sets us on the course for this film. One aspect of Fred that I saw is that he has a gr like his ability for empathy was enormous. And I think because he what he could do immediately to any person with any kind of problem or any any human condition, be it happiness or despair, was relate to it. Therefore, his empathy for it was kind of limitless. And I think what he sees in Lloyd sometimes, not to the same degree, but he sees elements of himself in Lloyd. And what he does is, whereas Lloyd can't see it or recognize it, he see he can see it and recognize it. But also, he also knows what can be done in order to advance yourself. So I think there are, there are moments, maybe to, as I said, smaller degrees, Fred sees elements of himself in Lloyd, which is why he can go, I know what this is, and this is how you can overcome it or work through it. What he's done with the part, kind of blew me away because I didn't realize he's how transformational he is as an actor. He's kind of stunning to watch. This uh, piece will be for an issue about heroes. Do you consider yourself a hero? I don't think of myself as a hero. No, not at all. What about Mr. Rogers? Is he a hero? I don't understand the question. Well, there's you, Fred, and then there's the character you play, Mr. Rogers. You said it was a play at the plate. Is that, is that what, is that what happened to you? I, I'm, I'm here to interview you, Mr. Rogers. Well, that is what we're doing, isn't it? He puts the cardigan on and he starts talking to you and you believe that it's Fred. You see Tom in there, but that's great because I think Tom is, um, there's a, there's, when you think of Tom Hanks, you think of, of kindness and you think of him being a really good guy. And, uh, and I think that helps us. And I think that you can, you can bring those two things together so that even if you see Tom in Fred, in, and Fred and Tom, as those things develop in our movie, I think it's going to be really powerful. I've obviously watched a lot of Fred Rogers, and, uh, and you watch a certain amount of Tom Hanks, and then you meet Tom, and Tom is, um, he's, uh, he's on, you know? He's firing fast, and, uh, Fred was fast, he was a fast thinker, he was not a fast talker, and he really, again, would let you do the talking. And so what I've found is what's been interesting is to see Tom sort of take that on. And when he lets that air make its way into his performance, it really becomes really, it becomes really powerful and, and transformative, I find. The outpouring of love that's come in little bits and pieces when we've shown pictures of Tom B. Fred or there's been a release about something that we're doing or just the people knowing about this project, so many different walks of life have gotten behind the idea of what it is that this is. And I'm just excited to um, get it out into the world and have people react to it because I do feel like it's a very universal story. And I feel like people will really be able to relate whether we like it or not to Lloyd. And I feel like maybe if we can get a bit of Fred in us in the way that Lloyd was able to, I think we'll be, we'll be leaving the theater in a, in a, in a better state of mind.
we were doing this hero story, this hero's issue, and um, somebody at the magazine thought it would be really kind of funny having me, um, you know, this, you know, kind of hotshot sort of badass guy um, doing a story on Fred Rogers. And so it was, it was intended as like this juxtaposition of, of good Fred and bad me, you know, a role that I was definitely willing to step into and willing to play at the time. And, it, you know, it, I mean, in the movie, he's, he's not happy that he gets this story. In real life, I was fairly, um, fairly pleased because I thought that, well, this is my chance to sort of, you know, not just explore goodness, but to see, you know, all of that which lurks behind it. Fred saw me, sized me up, and, you know, went to work, which is, I mean, th that, is, that is where the movie and where the script is very, very true to life. I mean, Fred, I mean, he had that amazing gift of looking at a person and seeing what that person needed and that he was going to minister to that person. And that person in this particular case was me. And I look back on it now and, and realize, you know, how purposeful Fred was and how kind of relentless he was in doing that. Coming here to the set and watching Tom as Fred, uh, that was the first thing that really, really hit me uh, yesterday was, oh my God, Fred's gone, but this is as close to I'm going to get to ever being, you know, with him again. And um, it was, you know, it was a powerful, it was a powerful, it was a powerful moment. It made, it reminded me of, you know, this man who at the time took a, took a chance on me. His spoken message is simple, but his, the message of his life is not simple because the, the message of his life is, is, is goodness in action, goodness enacted. And, and, you know, I think that if, if the movie captures that and the difficulty of that and the worth of that and the aspirational worth of that, that, hey, maybe... Maybe we should all aspire to be, to be a little better. I love that he's not doing an imitation of Mr. Rogers, but really, you know he's done the research and it all lives there. So you hear Mr. Rogers, but you also know it's, there's a new life being breathed through it, and there's space for that, and there's room for that, which is a lovely, beautiful thing. You know, you can't really recreate a person, you know. There are people who do imitations for that. But there is something about um, bringing a humanity to a role and breathing, bringing new life and new breath into something, while very much reminding us of that very person which I think he does really well. Now, Matthew brings this quiet intensity, I've learned with him, to, to the roles that it's, there's really, you can see him thinking through a lot and, and tracking the, the journey of his character a lot. Um, and and even now, watching him um, sort of work this green screen moment, and all of us are off camera and stuff, but you can see that he, he has it, he's visualized it all in his head. He's, he's gone through the motions and the emotions and knows um, fully where his character is in these moments. So it's easy to, to trust him when I work with him.
She's exciting to work with and calming at the same time. Um, she definitely keeps a sense of peace on the set, a sense of encouragement and, and trust. And that's, I mean, I don't know how much more you can ask for in a director, really. There's so much love for him here. Um, shooting in Pittsburgh has, has been um, really cool because it's, you get the feeling of what inspired him maybe. This is where he's from and um, being able to shoot at the actual studio where he shot, all those things help. It's just, it's the vibe, getting the feeling of something helps so much as an actor. And Pittsburgh is such a, a beautiful city.